So what tribe are we? We're Judahites, of course. We're African American, so called African American. We're Judahites. We function priestically, so we have Levite blood. We have we have French in our so called uh, African American ancestry, so we have Levi there. We have free men in our family, so we have Don there. We have family from down south, which the Geechee, which formerly were transplanted from the Caribbean. So we have Binyam, Benjamin there. So which tribe are we? You understand this question about what, what tribe are we? As African American, we are primarily Judah. As so called Negroes, we are primarily Judah. Now, some would ask, well, what about Ethiopia? Because there are ones who have, when we have lectured and taught on this, there's ones who have asked, obviously, well, what about Haile Selassie and what about Ethiopia? You see, Ethiopia and Kadamawi Haile Selassie, he represents that king's line or the house of David. You understand? The, the, the monarchy and the, the royal house. Hold. You have to remember what prophecy says that Israel will never lack a man to sit upon the throne of David. And through the Ethiopian Hebrew evidence, we have that being proven and that being fulfilled. So when the Bible says that Israel will, and David will never lack a man to sit on his throne, you understand? We're speaking now of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, the Moa, Anbesa, Ze'im, Negeda, Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Negusa Neges, Zechopia, Siyume, Egizi, Adir. We're speaking about that king's line. So in the east, in Ethiopia, this is what we said, look to the east. You understand? Look to the east. Why do we look to the east? Why did African Americans and Africans and, and the diaspora and the Caribbean look to the east? Why did the Reverend James Morris Webb proclaim those prophetic words that later on Marcus Garvey would co-opt and also declare in a similar fashion of looking to the east when a black man would be crowned king in him you shall find the Redeemer. In him you will find the Redeemer. That was what Reverend James Morris Webb originally uttered. Those were prophetic words to us as African American. Judah here in the diaspora must look to the east for that black man who would be crowned king. And that black man who was to be crowned king was Ras Tefari, who was crowned Negus Tefari in 1928. Two years before he was crowned Negusa Neges the Ethiopia and ascended the throne with that new name, Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So that's the king's line. Ethiopia represents the king's line. This is what's very important. Ethiopia represents the monarchy, the king's line, because David would never lack a man to sit on his throne. You see what I'm saying? So if you discount Ethiopia, then you discount Yahweh's word and biblical prophecy. Then that means basically, woy, woy, that's a woe. You understand? That's a woe. And see, in our ignorance and in a lot of the Hebrew Israelites' ignorance, you understand, and in their so called overzealousness. You understand, that's not according to gnosis. That's not according to knowledge. They have a zeal for God. You understand? But not according to knowledge. Because if they would receive the true knowledge, then the whole picture becomes clear. Then it really becomes clear. When we're speaking of Haile Selassie and Judah, we're not speaking of all Ethiopians. See, in Ethiopia is a very unique and a special case, Ethiopia. Because see, Ethiopia, there are Hamites and there are Shemites. You see, there are Ethiopian Shemites. Haile Selassie, being the king of kings of Ethiopia, he is that Shemitic, that African Shemite. He was an African Shemite. And the whole revolution against his imperial majesty was primarily backed by African Hamites. The very same African Hamites who 
conspired with the Arabs and the Muslim Mohammedans on one hand, and then with the so-called crypto Jews, the Moreno Jews, as well as with the Anglos, you know, saying the Anglo-Europeans against their Shemitic, African Shemitic brothers and sisters and selling us into slavery, into the West. You see, so a lot of, a lot of the teachers and so-called teachers out there haven't really touched on that. But if you do a little bit of research on it, I haven't even done a Google on it just yet, but after this uh, dissertation, we're definitely going to check it out because we did come across a couple of pages out there on the Internet What we looked up like African, Shemite, and Shemitic, African, and Shemite, where you'll find that there's a difference in African. All Africans are not the same Africans. You see what I'm saying? You have those African Hamites, which are in their own forms of ancestral worships, that have nothing to do with our he- Hebraic, you understand, have nothing to do with the covenant. And then you have other Africans who are Shemites, and if you look at their customs and their traditions, you will find that they are Hebraic, that they are Hebrews, and they do things in a Hebrew way. Not all Africans are Hebrews. You see what I'm saying? Just like not all black people are Hebrews. See, this is something we have to recognize sooner, hopefully, than later. And a lot of a lot of uh, the Rastafari, you know, what I'm saying, have somewhat become a little bit um, disorientated on some of these on some of these fine points of prophecy, Yovas. Know, and this is one of the reasons for this ministry, Yovas. Know, saying in these last days, Yovas, you know, saying so that this remnant, that the remnant can be saved, and the remnant will be saved. The earliest. Uh, Rastafari, if you do a little study on Sam Brown and and others of those, I call them the first generation, the Rastafari, uh, uh, the proclaimers, the first proclaimers of Rastafari, they all recognize that we as Rastafari, you know, that we as black people, first of all, are the Israelites. One of the earliest doctrines, you understand, and the earliest teachings of the earliest Rastafari was that we as black people are the Israelites who have got sold into slavery because of our disobedience to the covenant pointing to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 to 68 and other places in the Holy Bible. So true Rastafari recognizes that we as black people who were sold into slavery are the Israelites. But that teaching over the last 40 years has been suppressed and very rarely articulated. It has not been articulated. In fact, it's in this present time that there is a resurgence of ones and ones who are Rastafari, who say they are Rastafari, who are recognizing that suppressed truth. That the, 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 the truth of Rastafari doctrine, one of the first points and principles of Rastafari doctrine and Rastafari teaching from the earliest its, its um, in, in, inception, one can say the, the birth of this movement. And the Rastafari movement did not just begin in Jamaica, but it was known most, most um, globally because of Benjamin and her little ruler as prophecy states, and through the the ministry of Berlahana Selassie, through the ministry of Robert Nesta Marley, Bob Marley, you understand, and through the ministry of other Rastafari from that particular generation and time. This is how Rastafari in Jamaica became um, almost synonymous but if you do a historical study and your own research, you'll find that, the, that there was a Rastafari influence in America. Before Haile Selassie was crowned King of Kings, he already had a following in America. Ones recognized that prophecy and recognized other prophecies that were being fulfilled in Rastafari, Rastafari Mekonin, in Ethiopia concerning us and concerning the particular time and age, 19, circa 1930s. So this is, these are aspects of the truth that we have to begin to preach, 
we have to first of all learn it and we have to preach and disseminate it because these are the core, this is like the core curriculum. We can call this the core curriculum of Rastafari, that Rastafari from its earliest inception recognize that black people in the West, you understand, are in a Babylon and a type of a spiritual Egypt, but the black people in the West are Israelites who were sold into slavery because of their disobedience to the covenant. And it was through our kinsman redeemer, through Rastafari, Negus Tafari, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, Negus Negeza, Ethiopia, that we found our kinsman redeemer. And this is where the idea of Rastafari redemption really came into focus. <laughs>